Hello everybody. So I am making another bowl today. I am using my mold. This is the second time that I will have used it. And I'm quite happy with it. I, th I think it was worth the 15 bucks that it was. <laughs> uh, thanks to Mixed Media Girl for the recommendation. So as you know, I really like to repurpose. I don't like to buy new things unless I absolutely have to. And so I am actually repurposing nail chrome powders. So that's what are in those little containers that you see over by my spray bottle. And I really do enjoy doing my nails. I've bought a lot of kind of nail art items uh, because I prefer to do them myself so I don't have to pay somebody else. <laughs> and I enjoy it. Um, but now my focus has shifted to this kind of art. So I'm wondering... That's 12, 12 ounces, by the way, of mixed resin. Um, so I looked up the ingredients that are in those nail powders, chrome powders, and it just so happens that it's basically mica powder, a very small amount of it. Um, and what I'm actually holding up right now are these little tiny, they're like crushed shells almost. And they came for free with my chrome powders, I believe. I did definitely did not order them. <laughs> um, they've been on my nails, those little crushed shells, but they're a pain in the butt. So I decided I'm going to um, use them in the resin. And so I've chosen, I think at that point I chose four colors but I believe I knocked it down to three. Um, so I wanted to, okay, so this is the one that I'm showing you now. This is like a dark blue. It's a beautiful color. And so I'm putting that little tiny amount on the popsicle stick and then putting it in the resin. I've divided the 12 ounces up into What's the other color I'm going to use? It's a color shift and I hadn't opened it before, so I have to open the lid. <laughs> um, I divided the resin up into, as you can see, I still have some in the big cup. So I've got um, maybe two, four, six, eight, maybe three ounces in each of the cups. And then um, just a little bit in the cup with the stones. Okay, so then that's kind of like a purpley color shift. Chrome powder. And these chrome powders are supposed to kind of um, rub or varnish into your nail. And it makes this like really shiny, mirror-y effect. And I knew I wasn't going to get that with the resin. But I wanted, what I'm trying to do <laughs> is color the resin without using resin dye liquid or alcohol ink. Not that there's anything wrong with those. I just wanted to try something different without purchasing brand new mica powders. I see a lot of fluid artists on YouTube using mica and it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. But I'm going to use what I have for the time being. And if I really like it and I can't figure out another way to do it with stuff I already have, then I will go ahead and buy some. So starting with some of the that was a like a holographic rainbow color um, in the center and then i'm going for the dark blue um, i also forgot to mention earlier that i wiped my mold out with uh, isopropyl alcohol just in a spray bottle and then I used a coffee filter to wipe it out. If I were to use a paper towel or something like that, the fibers would get uh, stuck in the mold. And so coffee filters have been my go-to um, for the last several months for cleaning off things like this. And I just love it because it's very inexpensive. And I actually had a whole pack um, of large coffee filters. I use a small coffee maker at my house. So 
I had an extra pack of large ones and this was just the perfect use for it. So I'm just continuing to pour the various colors into the mold in a ring form. And I knew I wanted to put those crushed shells along the outer edge. So in my mind, you know, I'm saving those for that purpose. The rest of the colors are just getting um, poured. Obviously this is sped up. <laughs> My table I thought was level, but it's not. If you've watched any of my other videos before, you know that I sometimes have problems with my table being level. <clears throat> and if I'm doing a painting, it's easy to fix, relatively easy, to fix the levelness of the canvas with the push pins that are in the bottom. But clearly I have no push pins here. And so I do have to end up, there we go, adjusting the table with I just use popsicle sticks <laughs> or sometimes leftover cardboard to adjust the table legs. So I was perfectly fine pushing the resin from one side to the other, um, essentially mixing the colors together. I didn't mind that at all. And just trying to get out every last little drop. I could have scraped the cup with a popsicle stick, but I guess I didn't want to. And so there are those gorgeous crushed shells. They're kind of like rainbow color. Now this was a risky move. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm not doing one continuous stream with the torch. I was doing little bur bursts of the flame. Uh, and then I ended up switching to my heat gun. You will see a little bit later, I'll give you f some forewarning <laughs> that I do catch this whole thing on fire. You'll see. It was a stupid move, but I'm not going to cut it out because it's real life. Um, so there were a lot of air bubbles and I knew I needed to get them out or wanted to get them out. And because I could tell that the torch was risky, I switched back to the heat gun for a little bit. All right. So now I am gently scooping the shells onto the outer edge sparingly, just because I wanted to make sure they made it all the way around first. And then I went back and filled in any of the thinner areas. I really wanted them to stay on the outer edge and not migrate inward too much. So occasionally you'll see me use the popsicle stick to, um, what's the word? Herd. <laughs> As if I'm herding sheep. There we go. We're herding. We're herding the shells back toward the outer edge. They're starting to, to flow away from the flock. So that's all I'm doing there is pushing them close up to the edge with the popsicle stick. That one got really far away. <laughs> I'm also watching to make sure no big like hairs or lint or whatever bugs uh, end up in the resin. So just taking a popsicle stick, doing some swirls. No method to the madness there. Um, right now I'm spritzing it with the isopropyl alcohol to try and get rid of the bubble bubbles. And I think here's where I make my big mistake. Yep. There it is. There it is, folks. I thought it was over. Over. I thought my resin was ruined. I thought my mold was ruined. I thought that bowl was ruined. But guess what? The fire went right out. <laughs> It was so stupid of me to use the torch right after spraying alcohol. I don't know why. I don't know what I was thinking. But I'm very grateful that the Halloween bowl muffled the, um, or suffocated really, the oxygen toward the fire and it got put out. So folks, please be careful with this stuff. I'm taking a coffee filter spritzed with alcohol and rubbing the edge of the mold. 
that was just to get the extra epoxy off. And then now I'm using the heat gun. Uh, I'm done with the torch. <laughs> using the heat gun, there were bubbles that were pretty deep in the mold. And so right there where you're, you'll see me hold the heat gun, that's because I'm after a specific bubble. I had to push the resin pretty far to get those bubbles out. I guess I could have mixed my resin a little bit ahead of time, but I don't know. I just, I've had it start to harden up on me uh, quicker than I wanted in the past. So I've never had that happen before, by the way, the fire thing. That was hopefully the one and only time that ever happens. Oh, Lord. So getting the bubbles out, you can see a little bit of the color shift. It's very pretty. So it has definitely started to cool off a little bit here where I am in Maryland. And I end up um, coming back and checking on this every hour, hour and a half or so. And over the summer, it would be ready like after an hour. Um to demold but oh, there we go I'm going back in with the torch because <laughs> I um really wanted those air bubbles out and was having a hard time there definitely were some that were deep down in there anyway um I will go back and check on it uh until it's able to be demolded um I do cover it with a food net Actually, this is one of the times that I go to check on the resin to see if it is ready to demold. And I, what I did was I started to kind of fold the mold backwards a little bit and I could tell it was just still too sticky. And I stuck my pinky in it <laughs> and again, really, really sticky. Um, and so I left a mark when I did that. So all you have to do is take your heat gun or torch and heat that portion of the resin and it will go right back to where it was nice and flat. You can tell the resin's not moving. <laughs> And there, my camera fell. Yup, my camera stand fell directly into the resin. Again, I could have um, cut that out, but I didn't because again, that's real life. <laughs> so I am taking a coffee mug with a mason jar on top. And I'm just kind of playing around with this because this is my first time doing it this way. And so I'm trying to warm up the resin a little bit with the heat gun. And then my hope was that, <clears throat> excuse me, I could drape the mold over my little, uh, what do you call that, tower there. But it, it ended up not working. Again, I kept this part in just because I'm showing you all the troubleshooting that I'm doing. So I take duct tape and tape the mason jar to the coffee mug. So unfortunately my camera was not working properly um, and I didn't record the demolding as much as I loved doing it, sorry. Um, I promise I'll do another one another time. But I was actually happy with the pliability of the resin. It wasn't too hard, it wasn't too soft. Um, so I took a silicone mat. I, that's what I was going to say earlier was a black silicone mat circular, um, put it over top of the mason jar and then took the resin just using my bare hands, um, and draped it on top. So the resin is sitting on the very top, um, because I did touch it with my bare hands. And even if I had used gloves, um, there still would have been markings on it. 
So I'm just using my heat gun to get rid of any of those markings and fingerprints. All right, so it sat for several hours, um, probably overnight, <laughs> and it is time to demold. So it came off nice and easily because of that silicone mat, and I'm pulling the mat off and giving you a nice close up. The colors are beautiful. Um, I'm just showing you from a whole bunch of different angles. But what I found was I really liked the colors when they were up against that black. So um, I put the mold back in and I put it um, to dry a little bit longer. You can see how they pop um, those chrome colors. So what I actually decided to do was Okay, so here I am using a 100, uh, actually 220 grit sanding um, paper to just smooth out a few of the rough edges, nothing crazy. Uh, there was just one kind of lump on the inside of the bowl that I just needed to smooth out. Um, also using a nail file, I think that's also a 220 grit. But I decided that I loved the color shift um, effect up against the black that I was going to spray paint the bottom of the bowl with black. And so that is what I ended up using. Um, and there it is. <laughs> Boy, that went by fast. Um, once I let the spray paint dry for several hours, um, I decided to put a coat of resin over top of it because I really wanted that glossy shine. I started to pour the resin and it was dripping off, of course, straight onto the parchment paper on my table. So I sort of taped the gaps so that the resin wouldn't run straight off of it, that it would catch a little bit. And then I could um, pick it back up with my gloved hand and just kind of rub it um, all into the different areas of the bowl. I've never done this before. This is my first time doing it. And if I, I really should say when I do this again, because I do like this effect, I would probably start with the inside, start with resining the inside. Um, and that's just to prevent the outside from getting um, damaged. You'll kind of see what I mean in a little bit. Uh, so I am torching right now just to pop the air bubbles. And I will take a popsicle stick and scrape any of the drips that are forming at the bottom of the bowl um, because I'm not going for a drippy effect. And I scrape a few times, um, even after it sits for a little while, I come back and scrape it just because I don't want to have to sand those down later. And I tried covering this with a food net, but it was too high up. Um, so you'll see in a little bit, I take a large um, Tupperware storage container and I take a... Um, what is that compressed air and I sprayed the inside of the Tupperware container to make sure that there was nothing inside of it that would fall into the resin um, and then I put that on top of this piece to protect it from dust debris bugs so there you see me taking the popsicle stick and just scraping any of the drips and I knocked it off <laughs> and I actually am sitting it on top of a uh, can of spray, spray paint. The resin is completely hardened at this point. So I wasn't worried about keeping it molded in a certain shape. I knew, I knew it would hold the shape. And honestly, any resin that had run off onto the parchment paper, I was able to pick up and uh, put back onto the bowl. So here it is the next day, nice and dry, and it is time for me to resin the inside of the bowl. 
And that's because I did have to sand a few places. And of course, when you sand, it loses its shine. So before I resin it, I am spraying it with alcohol, wiping it with a coffee filter, just to make sure it's nice and clean, free of dust. And again, this is my first time resining a bowl like this. <laughs> so it's a little bit of trial and error, but I end up just kind of drizzling the resin around the edges and then into the middle and just kind of using my gloved hand to push the resin into all of the different places. The gloves I'm using are not my favorite. They're my backup gloves, but, um, they were okay. I do eventually get a, like a squeegee kind of tool you'll see to help me push the resin into the, all the different crevices. I am torching them. Um, there were air bubbles and there's my little squeegee. What I didn't want to happen was to push the resin over the sides and have it drip down and ruin the back that I just resined a little while ago. So, um, I did my best, but unfortunately it still ended up happening. I, I tried to wipe it off. I tried, you know, to clean it up before it hardened, but it still happened. So that's why I would recommend doing the inside of the bowl first, then flipping it, then doing the outside. And then that way, if any of the resin drips, um, onto the outside of the bowl at this stage, you could potentially sand it off lightly uh, before covering it with the resin. So I do torch it. Um, any of the, of the resin that runs into the middle is no big deal. It's clear. And so it's all good. Covered it up. Here's the next day. And it just is gorgeous in that sunlight. I'm so happy with it. The um, shell pieces that I put around the edges are there and I just love it. Thanks for watching.